I'm getting ready to hop on a plane and fly for 24 hours to see a 3D printer on the other side of the world. Right now I'm packing and I'm about to hop on a plane from Florida. I'm going to be driving down to Orlando and then I'm going to be flying to San Francisco and then I'm going to be flying all the way over to Taiwan and I'm going to be landing in Taipei and then I'm going to be visiting Frozen. If you're not familiar with Frozen, Frozen is a very well-respected 3D printer manufacturer in the resin 3D printing space. Now, why am I visiting a resin 3d printing company and slice engineering we are fdm fff 3d printing we manufacture hot ends why am i going on such a long and arduous journey to visit frozen i'm going because they are releasing an fdm 3d printer it's currently on kickstarter and it's called the arco we're going to release a custom Gear Master nozzle for everyone who backs the campaign. Let's go see the Frozen Arco firsthand in action. When I see you guys next, I'm going to be in Taiwan. It's time to go. I've got a plane to catch in about 20 hours. I'm going to finish packing up here, and then I will see you guys on the other side of the world. All right, let's go. All right, I have made it. I am in Taipei. I'm on my way right now to meet up with Xiao, another member of Team Slice. He has also just landed in Taipei. I landed a little bit earlier this morning. I've been walking around, just taking in the sights of downtown Taipei. If you can't already see, I am in the heart of Taipei right now. It's actually kind of crazy, super insane. Very cool, very cool city. There are so many scooters. I was not, I, I was told there were a lot of scooters, was not prepared for how look at all the this probably not great b-roll but a lot of scooters um anyways i got there's a pigeon he is not not bothered by me in the least hey buddy i'll catch up with you guys once i get to taipei main and connect with xiao and then we're gonna go see frozen and start looking at their space so i'm gonna catch you guys later but we made it to Taipei. See y'all. All right, I found Xiao in Taipei, Maine. Obviously, we are not in Taipei, Maine right now. We are in a vehicle on our way driving to Frozen. We're driving through the mountains of Taiwan on our way to Frozen's HQ. It's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to walk through tonight, and then we're going to start shooting tomorrow. We are going to take you guys behind the scenes, and I'm excited to see what frozen has going on and we'll have more updates for you guys then all right bye we have finally arrived to the frozen hq we took about an hour drive through the mountains of Taiwan from Taipei. Uh, what city are we in, Xiao? I'm not even, uh, even going to attempt to pronounce it because I am white. That's okay. <laughs> so we're in the city of Xinzhou here in Taiwan. It's about an hour away from Taipei, as Peyton said. Uh, yeah, so the drive was fun. Uh, you know, just going through the mountains, not much happening. Uh, but yeah, so here we're finally at the Frozen headquarters in Taiwan. So I think it'll be, it'll be exciting to kind of see their office for the first time. Before we go off on this tour, is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to seeing the most? Well, obviously we're here to see Arco, their new yes. SDM printer. That's why you flew, you know, 24 yeah. hours just to it's get a long there. Trip. Yeah. Uh, so I think it'll be cool to see the printer for the first time. Mm -hmm. Definitely see how Gimma Master uh, is being used at the yeah. moment. I'm excited to see behind the scenes of the frozen operation and how that's going to translate to Arco and their new printer and their operation for the future and then how the Gamma Master and Slice Engineering is going to integrate with that as well. So I'm excited. We're super excited to take you guys behind the scenes. We've finally made it to Frozen. I think it's time for us to go ahead and head on in. Of course. Let's take a look. Let's go.
We are in the printing lab now with Tian Yu Li, uh, and I am very excited to look at this space because there are a lot of printers. So I would just like to start by saying thank you so much for having us here, and I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself awesome. to our audience and tell us about all of these printers. Hello everyone, I'm Tian Yu. I'm the marketing guy here in the company. So here uh, is our printing room. You can see a dozen uh, printers here. Uh, the first thing you can see here is our uh, dental printers. Uh, so even though Frozen is always associated with the consumer printers, actually we have a really uh, strong foundation in dental 3D printing. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between the dental and the consumer printing is that it comes with a wide exterior to match the dental uh, clinic uh, style. Mm -hmm. Here is the section of the printers that we have released in this year's. And uh, you can see actually here, uh, these are the 4K and NK printers. So we are actually the first company to develop the monochrome uh, LCD to bring this technology into the, uh, into the market. So this is actually the first uh, 4K 3D, consumer 3D printers out there. So even though it has been out there for over four years, but the demand today is still pretty strong. Uh, a lot of users are still requesting uh, for these printers. And this is the first uh, consumer AK printers uh, out there. And you can see it's really large. Yeah, it's and very we, big. Yeah, so when we first time released that, people thought, okay, 4K could be the limits. But after we introduced the AK technology, kind of break the boundary again. So before the monochrome uh, technology, people thought, okay, the color printing, the color LCD is pretty much the limits. We introduced the technology first to introduce, okay, from, mono, uh, from multi-color, color screen to monochrome, and then to 4K, and now 8K, we have been leading the way to provide a better technology to consumer printer for over at least like five years or even longer since our inception. And this is one of our latest uh, printers, Mighty Rebel. So uh, besides the printing, so the precision reached 14K, but for this model, we don't necessarily highlight in the precision anymore because we kind of figured that it's to a tipping point that people have been failing to experience a bit more. So compared to the previous model, uh, the way we open the lid is actually very different. And it comes with a lot of small uh, detection here. So underneath uh, the, the fat, there are a lot of sensors. So it has the capability to detect the failure detection, the residual detection, and auto-leveling. So it's no longer manual adjusting or uh, checking out the printing process pretty well. Uh, pretty manual. If everything goes wrong, it detects it and send it to your phone. So you can just uh, tap the print and leave it and figure out the latest properties through your phone. So here we have the Mega AKS. So Mega AKS is actually a newer model of our next successor to the uh, Mega AK uh, mentioned before. So the, the way we open the LED is also different. And you can see the print volume is significantly larger uh, than, the, than the Mighty AK and the Mini AK. So back in the days, uh, we didn't expect that people have, people have strong demand for this type of device because we figured out that people necessarily don't have to print this size of model, but we realized that there are actually a lot of uh, print form used to make our size model to, uh, to print a lot of models uh, in one the one bedding. Great, well thank you so much for showing me the space. I think that it's awesome. You guys have so many printers, but before we wrap up with this space, I know you have one last area you want to show us. Yes. Um, obviously these are all your resin printers, but we're here because of FDM. Yeah. So we're gonna move over to the last bit of your space where you have Arco. Sure, no problem, let's go. Cool. So finally we reached the section of Arco. Uh, this is the FDM printer, kind of different from what we have been used to do for resin 3D printing. So uh, Arco is, uh, everybody knows Arco for the fast printing, big printing volume, and uh, uh, multi-color printing. So this is a uh, FDM of foreign structure or core XY people say it. Uh, the reason why we didn't start with the traditional Cartesian design is besides the three features that uh, multi-color printing, uh, fast printing, and also the large printing vo uh, volume, uh, Core XY actually has a lot more potential for the product uh, application or industrial application. So uh, this is how we enter the market with uh, this design. My personal experience with the Arco is 
you can get the print really fast. When it's done, it's done. So you can just directly pop out from this play and just get the final prints. Yeah, I like FDM a lot because I'm not, I usually, I prefer large models. I don't print a lot of miniatures or models. I print something that I can put on the table uh, to play with. And I love to check out the uh, prints very quick. So for me personally, I actually I like FDM more than resin 3D printing. For FDM, the space for this printer is pretty much all you need. So compared to the traditional Cartesian design, to print, it, uh, to print the FDM prints, it usually takes several hours. It could be three to four hours to get a 10 centimeter uh, object to be printed. But for Arco, it can be done under one hour. So uh, it's really fast and you can get the prints in no time. And back in the days, if you want to print the multicolor stuff, you have to print the multiple pieces in, in, in sequence. And after all the prints done, you have to put it back together. But you, if right now you can get it done in one setting with this one print. And so I would say if you want to prototype very quick, you want to check out uh, your, how your ideas turn out to be a real object, I would say Alpo is a perfect choice for everybody. We are on the fourth floor office uh, here at Frozen's HQ in Taiwan. This is one of their showroom uh, with a lot of, a lot of uh, resin prints. Um, so we'll use this chance for Tian Yu to kind of walk us through what's on the shelf here for us and briefly talk about the different types of resin they have in store right now. Sure. So uh, you can see it over here. Uh, these are the engineer resins we developed by ourselves. And these are the neon resin, which is released last year. So it caught a lot of attention because over the past, resins are mostly uh, gray, dark color. So these are really perfect. And uh, these are the dental resins we released. And here are the engineering resins we work with some big brands, for example, BASF. And these are the resins we work with Henko. So some of you may have seen this uh, during the trade show that we uh, hammered the nails with this printed uh, uh, printing hammer. Uh, in addition, this uh, resin is pretty strong, so like I can uh, throw it on the ground and bounce it back. Yeah, that's impressive. Right? And oh, we also have the resins for jewelry making, because uh, jewelry making, dental 3D yeah. printing, and miniature printing are some of the key applications by our users. So like for you know some of these you know really detailed model on the top, like do you know off the top of your head the printer and the resin they use to produce those models? Yeah, I believe this one is printed by Aqua Gray AK with the Almighty AK because uh, this actually very popular models. We launched this uh, along with this designer and after the campaign, uh, this model became super famous and also the designer as well. And this one is another model. Uh, we print it with the AK printer with our uh, red clay, so you can see that it's yeah, that's incredible. It's different from uh, from the no, uh, traditional uh, gray miniature. It's mm -hmm. uh, red like clay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So obviously, in the back, we have all these models that Tiering had the chance to kind of share with us. Uh, but one thing we haven't really touched base is the amazing Pixar community they've built. A lot of these models actually came from the Pixar community. So Tiering, why don't you walk us through what Pixar is and how has it benefit your community and really bring in all the new designer sure. uh, into the mix of you know being a resident printer user? Yeah, sure, no problem. So uh, since three years ago, we came to realize that uh, people actually need more than the printers and resins to print nice models, and that's how we started building Pixar. And mm -hmm. this market, you can treat it as a marketplace for 3D print, printing files. So every model you see here, you can actually find all the printing files on the Pixar. So how can people access Pixar now? And is there any you know sneak peek into the future of what new features might be released on the Pixar? Yeah, sure. So all you have to do is just type Pixar3.com, and that's our website. 
and eventually we are going to have a deeper integration between Pixar and the Frozen. So right now for Arco, we have a Pixar slicer, which is designed specifically for Arco FDM printer. Mm -hmm. So you can slice, process the printing files and get it printed out by Arco. As so obviously like for Pixar, it's a very streamlined process for user to interact from the model yeah. to print, right? So yes. is, that, is that going to apply to both FDM and resin essentially and ultimately is Pixup going to be used for the resin slicer as well? Uh, that could be one of the uh, directions. So maybe after F uh, FDM, we may apply the slicing capability to resins. Well, awesome. Kim, thank you so much yeah, for walking us through the showroom space. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, I'm sure some close-up shots are, are going to look amazing. Thank you for the time. No problem. Now we are in the customer support area with the section manager, Aaron. Thank you so much for allowing us to come here and see your space. Uh, could you just walk us through your area and explain to us what you do here? Sure. But today I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, the su customer support team members. And this is where basically how our team operates. Just everything happens here. And apart from that, we'll also be showing our, our repair center with you guys as well. Right, so basically what we do here is that we provide global support for everyone, including technical operations and also like how to use the printer and stuff such. And also like help center creation, those kind of stuff is all happening here. So what's special about the team is like we have about 30% uh, provenance on the team. How, how many people do you have on your support team? On our support team, we have about 20 agents. What areas does your team specifically support? Globally, so US, uh, EU, uh, Taiwan, China, everything. Yeah, awesome. all around the world. Okay, cool. Let's move on and see what you have going on over there. Sure. This is uh, our repair center. So as you can see, like we have a pretty big area. Uh, we're just not, for this specific center, we, just, we don't just like repair uh, products return from the customers uh, but we also like for example we create help centers and guides for our customers everything is filmed and photographed here and for example like emails uh, sometimes we uh, customers want like a specific like how to repair something then we also like uh, create a guide over here uh, what's interesting about this area is like we have basically try to keep all of our models around here. So as you can see on the top left of the corner is our 2019 first generation Sonic Mini. And also like these sections are like 9012K and such. So support teams doesn't just stay in the office area and respond to custom emails. In our team, we want every customer support team members able to uh, fix printers and understand how it works. So these printers are all for like testing usage. And over here we have the uh, earlier versions of our printers uh, before 2019 and also like uh, we have like our 2016 DLP printer maybe most of you guys have never seen it before but that is our first uh, DLP printer ever created and this is where Frozen began our first very uh, very first product uh, started from Kickstarter so yeah uh, it doesn't look much now anymore but yeah that's uh, one of the last Frozen one. Okay, so yeah, that's a. I think that's about it. Great. Now we are at one of Frozen's eight factory and warehousing locations globally. And this was actually the second factory of Frozen's and it's pretty massive. Yeah, it's the second ever factory they had since their company's inception. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of different resin printers here. And obviously Arco is not made here at the moment. 
But uh, yeah, we're pretty stoked to see how the whole assembly process yeah. works. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead, do a quick walkthrough of the space. They've given us the freedom to take our camera and run around. They've just let us kind of run free and show you the space. Hopefully we don't get kicked out. So we're gonna take you guys uh, on a little trip around the factory. Uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Alrighty, let's get it. We're at the first stop of the assembly line. And essentially the first thing everyone or all the assembly factory want to check is whether the components are actually up to the spec. Uh, so the lady here on my left is confirming all the components are working properly. Uh, as you can see, she's checking some different motors and so on. But this station is the first stop for all the components QA check. And uh, they also got some touchscreen module installation here going on as well. So we're at the second section uh, of their assembly line here. The lady on my right is assembling their light source, uh, which is critical for all of the resin printers here. Uh, and obviously Frozen has one of the best, uh, given that they pioneer the LCD technology. Uh, back in 2019 or 2020, I think. Um, so as you can see, she's assembling the electronics board onto the base now, and ultimately, they will put the uh, lighting matrix on the top. They have a whole nother QA process just to ensure the screws and the nuts are installed correctly, and that's how they can make sure that you know when the light sources are installed in, onto the printer, it can work fabulously without any issue, uh, so that most of their users get to print continuously. Now this is the quality assurance area here in the frozen factory. We were told that every single printer that's manufactured actually comes through this area and is tested for core components like heaters, air filtration systems, and specifically their LCD screens. Their LCD screens, we were shown the process that they go through where they're tested in a three by three matrix where they test the screens to make sure that they're consistent across the board. And every single printer has to pass the test and they're held to the same standard. Um, and if they don't pass the test, they don't go to the customer. Uh, and that was something that resonated with Xiao and I. Every component we manufacture at Slice is held to similar rigorous Q&A standards as well. The very last step before they're actually packed and shipped off, we were shown these test prints that they run on every single machine. Is that right? Yeah, I believe they use this print on every single one of the machine in the back and print this particular object. And they would try to observe any visual defects on there like cracks or any types of waviness by chance or this coloring if that were to happen in a rare occasion. But uh, yeah, this would be the standard they have uh, when they try to ship the machine, have the final okay, go, no, go sign before they move on to the packaging area. In this room, we'll show you some, some B-roll here of, of what they've got going on in this space, but I'd say there are probably close to 100 printers that are, you know, there's some undergoing active testing right now. There are some being packed up for delivery to resellers all over the world. There are some that have finished testing that are undergoing inspection right now. And then there are some that are making their way out of technical inspection that are waiting to move over to this next part for testing. There are so many printers in this room right now, we can't even get them all on camera. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's quite the operation. Uh, and I, I've not seen this many printers in one room. So it's actually, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we, like the tour today, we saw really just a small part of this factory. Right? There's a lot of areas we, we can't really go in because we're not part of their team, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, yeah they didn't give us total free reign. <laughs> yeah, but it's fortunate that we can still get the sneak peek at, you know, what a massive operation could look like yeah. when you are, you know, one of the leading, you know, consumer brand in the world in 3D printing. Uh, it's no easy feat, right? We try hard ourselves at Slice you know, to continue to deliver to our customers. But yeah, this operation here is uh, absolutely amazing. We're kind of towards the end of our trip in Taiwan, and uh, we finally had a chance to sit down for a cup of coffee. We're just in a shopping center. Finally had a chance to do some sightseeing, but uh, I think this is also a good opportunity for us to wrap up this video here. We were thinking of how we actually wrap this trip up, and we, you know, finished up at Frozen yesterday, and we, you know, we walked around their office. We had a chance to interact with their 
team and their engineers and you know their marketing personnel and their CEO and uh, you know toured their office and their factory and their warehouse and we got to see all all the stuff that they had and there was so much to take in that while we were there we just really didn't even know how to end this video so we said all right we're just gonna go home we're gonna sleep it was a long day and we'll figure it out tomorrow so now we're here uh, as a Giorgio Armani store right there uh, so it's kind of I guess unconventional to, to end it here but I think probably the best way to end this is to just kind of break down the trip and I want to just start by asking I guess you shall uh, what was uh, your favorite part of our tour at Frozen and I guess yeah I'll leave it I'll leave it there leave it pretty open-ended what was your favorite part of our time at Frozen? One of the things that stood out to me uh, for the entire time at Frozen is just how engaging their team members are, right? Uh, we were able to have the setup for the studio recording really quickly. Uh, they were all really open to, to working with us. And uh, I do feel like the interview you had with Ray uh, was one of the highlights for myself. Uh, we really had the, a lot of chance to kind of see the behind the scene uh, you know, of, of a leader, of a founder, of a CEO of such a company at, like Frozen, right? We've always seen this company at you know, Frozen uh, online all the time at different trade shows, but you know, having the chance to really have a sit-down conversation with them uh, was certainly uh, unique. So I think those are the parts that stood out to me. What about you? For me, I going into this, I wasn't super familiar with Frozen. Because, um, I mean, firstly, my background, I didn't really start getting into 3D printing until I joined the team at Slice. I had some familiarity beforehand and was still very much uh, a newbie in the world of 3D printing when I joined the team. And so because I like the world of FDM is all that I've ever known, Frozen was never really on my radar. And so the scope and scale of what they do was just something that had never crossed my mind. And so being there and just seeing the size of their facility was really cool to see. But I think even more than just seeing the size, because there's a lot of big companies, and even in FDM, I mean, we have some massive companies in the space. I mean, you've got, you know, Prusa and Creality and, and all these companies that are doing, they're making a lot of machines and they're doing it in really large volumes. That's not uncommon. What was really cool to see was that even though they're making large volumes of machines, their ability to still have such high quality control and the actual, like the care that they put into their printers the whole time, like every single printer underwent such specific and strenuous testing was really surprising to me. Because I know, I mean, you see a lot of times in manufacturing processes when they're manufacturing in large quantities, you know, you you test them in, you know, batches and that sort of yeah. thing. So they have high quality control standards, even at the large volumes that they were making. It's like it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another to actually do it. Yeah. So I think that for me was something that I wasn't expecting coming into it. And I also just, I didn't know what to expect out of this trip because um, I've never... I've not ever been to Taiwan. I had this is my first time in Asia, so I didn't really know what to expect about the culture, um, the environment of the workplace, any of that sort of stuff. And I would just say that I, I had a really great time on the trip, enjoyed engaging with their staff in the workplace and all of that. And I've had a really good time here, and I'm excited to eventually get an Arco in our office to actually be able to use it more. My least favorite part of the trip is that it is only for a short time. And so I only got, you know, experience with the printer for a few days. And so I'm excited to, whenever we eventually get our machine, to be able to sit there and play with it for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the engineers in our team in Florida is uh, pretty excited, pretty stoked to wait for the printer to arrive. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to, I guess, answer more questions about Yarko and our stuff and more. If you want to find out more about Frozen Arco as an ARCO, uh, you can type up Frozen Arco Launch Group on Facebook and uh, you'll be able to find it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, 
Thank you so much for your time and watching this video. We're super excited about more content to come in the future. All the information that you need is in the description below. Uh, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and give us a comment below if you have any specific questions about the Arco that we can answer. In the meantime, don't forget to stay zesty.